What if there was a GraphQL client that you could use directly from your terminal? At StepSam, we're working hard to provide the best possible developer experience for developers building GraphQL APIs. So in our latest version of a CLI, we released a new feature called StepSam Request, which you can use to send requests to a GraphQL API directly from your terminal command line. Let's see how it works. For this, I've set up a fresh StepSam project in VS Code. And here you can see I have one file called schema.graphql that contains all the queries and types for my GraphQL schema. To deploy this schema, I just need to run steps and start from a terminal. So let me increase the size of the terminal a bit. And in here, I only need to run steps and start. So this will run the steps and GraphQL API and also deploy it to the cloud so I'm able to send requests to this GraphQL API. And once it is deployed, the CLI will also provide you with a sample query that you can run using a curl request. You can see you can find it right here. It says curl. It has my GraphQL API endpoint. It has my API key. It also sets some headers. And then it has a query that returns all the queries that are available in this GraphQL schema. Let me just copy paste this and stop running the GraphQL API. As it's already deployed, I can just interact with it uh, via the cloud. Let me clear this terminal and paste the curl command. And this will return all the queries that are available for this GraphQL schema. As you can see, there are quite a lot. But what if we could make this easier? There's a lot of things that we're duplicating. So instead of running this command, which is a curl command, I can also run our steps and request. In steps and request, you can send requests to a Steps and GraphQL API directly from your terminal, meaning that you don't need to use curl, but you also don't need to use an external tool like the Steps and Dashboard or even Postman. If I would run this command, which is steps and request and the query name, it will get all the data that we saw previously, but now via the command steps and request. But besides sending a simple request, there's much more you can do. So steps and request currently supports subscriptions, mutation. It even allows you to provide a GraphQL query that's in a separate file or variables that are in a separate file or apply custom headers. So let's head back to VS Code and explore this cool new feature. Next to queries, steps and requests can also handle mutations. So let me try this mutation, which is called update customer email, and it will take two variables, which are customer ID and email, which are hard coded in the query. If I press enter, the email address will be updated in the database to samandexample.com. But instead of having my variables updated, I want them to be actual variables. For this, I need to change the query a bit. So it will be a named query or named mutation actually that will take two variables that are be that you can recognize from the dollar sign so let me rerun steps and request and this time pass a named mutation called update user to it i also need to provide a flag for the username uh, or customer id actually so i can set customer id is five so let's keep the same values as we previously had hard coded in the mutation and let's also set the email to be not sam at example.com, but let it be sam1 at example.com. So variable email is sam1 at example.com. Once you press enter, it will resend the mutation, but now it will be using these variables, those actual variables. As you can see from the response, our response, our email address will now be sam1 at example.com instead of sam at example.com. And this mutation is actually a nice way to, uh, to also be checking out for a subscription because you can subscribe to the query that gets the customer information. So let me clear up our terminal again. So let me clear this. And now let's run a mutation to get the user or the customer actually from the database. To run subscriptions, you can just use steps and request and then provide the subscription operation instead of a query or mutation. So this will get the email first name and last name for a customer with the ID 5, which was the customer that we just updated in the database. And as it's subscription, it will look for changes in the data. So as long as the data isn't changing, nothing will happen in my view here. But luckily, we just experimented with sending a mutation for this user. So let me try and change the email address of this user using a steps on request. 
So in a second terminal window, I will be running steps and request with a mutation to update the customer's email address. And we're going to be changing it from sam1 and example.com back to sam and example.com, which was the initial value we inserted for this customer. Once I press enter, it should update the data in the database and my subscription should display a new result. And of course, we can keep changing these values. So let's go back to sam1 and example.com or maybe try sam2. This will update the data in the database and then show my latest information in the subscription. And to stop the subscription from running, we need to run, uh, we need to use Ctrl C in our terminal, which will stop steps and requests from watching any updates to the subscription. So let me clear the terminal again so we can try out something new. And next to type in the query in your terminal, we can also use a separate file to define our query. For this, I'm going to be creating a new file called operations.graphql. And in here, I will be pasting a query. And this query is the customer query that we previously already run. So let me save this and then expand my terminal a little. Get rid of the second view as we no longer need it. And in here, I'm going to be typing steps and request. Make sure to use a double quote, a dollar sign, and then I'll be saying cat operations.graphql. Let me close it and again use the double quotes. Once I press enter, it will execute the query that I have in my file operations.graphql. What if you would have a named query here? Because that's another use case. We can also name this query query get, get user. And maybe I have a second query that says query get user email, which will only get the email for this user. Once I save this, I can no longer run steps and request get operations.graphql. Instead, I need to define the operation name. I'm going to be running the same request, but this time I will be appending the flag operation name. Here I'll be saying operation name is get, don't delete the E, is get user. This will execute only the first query that I have in the file operations.graphql. Of course, I can also use the second query, which I called get user email by running the same uh, command, but this time I will be using get user email as the operation name. And this then should only get the email of the user that we have in our database with the ID of five, which we have defined right here. And of course you can mix and match all these different types, uh, all these different ways to get data using steps and requests. As a single trick, you can also provide the um, you can also provide the variables that we saw before in a separate file. For this, we can create a new file and let's call it user.json. In this JSON file, I will be putting the same data as we previously used to query uh, the user from the database. So let me format this and of course, make sure that this is a JSON file. And I also need to update my query to be a named query. I will be going back to my operations.graphql and in here I will be changing the query get user to also take the customer ID and let's make it into a variable. Customer underscore ID. Uh, let's say this is a required integer and also say this should be the variable customer ID. So now if I would rerun uh, this command to take the operation name get user from this file, I would also need to append the variable to it. So one thing I could do, of course, is using var and then say customer ID is five. So this should work, but what we want to do instead, we want to take the variable that we have in the JSON file. So instead of using the dash dash fair, I will be using dash dash fair file. Change this into dash file. 
and pass the user.json that I just created to the steps and request command. So now the query will take the variable from the JSON file instead of taking it either hard coded or taking it from a separate variable flag. In this video, you learned how to use Steps and Request, a brand new GraphQL client that runs directly in your terminal or command line. I hope you enjoyed this video, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to Steps and YouTube channel.